Here, we are going to use AIK tools to create a bootable ISO that can be placed on a flash drive, such as Pendrive Linux Multiboot or Burn to a CD. You will then be able to use this ISO to create and prepare Windows image files of an entire system for deployment and backup. This ISO will contain the Windows PE or preboot environment and load it into RAM. First, open the Deployment Tools command prompt with Administrative Privileges. We're temporarily done with System Image Manager and now we need to use the Deployment Tools command prompt. And you could just click on the command prompt or you could just type CMD if you wanted and use Change Directory to get to the folder, but the neat thing is when you install the you know, AIK and click on Microsoft Windows AIK, there's a shortcut and it'll open up right in the directory you need to be in to access most of the deployment tools. Um, so you don't have to you know, do CD a bunch of times to change directory. Now you don't want to just click on it, you're going to need escalated or elevated privileges. So you're going to want to right click and select Run as Administrator. Now when you do this, of course, UAC is going to nag you. But now we'll open up our command prompt here. Notice that opens us right up into Program Files, Windows, AIK, Tools, PE Tools. And let me just do a DIR to list the directory contents and you can see what's here. AMD64 for 64-bit AMD. Uh, IA64, Itanium, x86, 32-bit, and here's you know most of the tools that we need are going to be in you know these this directory and and the subdirectories within it. Next, use the copy pe command or copy pe.cmd file. It requires two arguments: the processor environment x86 for 32-bit and AMD64 IA64 for 64-bit, and the destination to copy the files to. So the tool we want to use is this one here: copy pe.cmd. And I'm just going to use that command, copy pe.cmd. And the first argument I want to supply is this x86 directory, because I'm 32-bit and Intel chipset, not AMD64, IA64, but uh, x86. And that's the directory we'll use to build the WinPE directory or folder. And then last is just where I want to put it or place it. So c colon backslash, and why not call it Windows or WinPE for the Windows uh, preboot environment. Okay, so we'll do that, and I mean you could call it banana if you wanted to, but I guess WinPE is, you know, makes it be what it is, or you know, Mino can find words for that. Anyway, um, all right, so we've used that tool. Third, use the standard command console copy command to copy WinPE WIM to the ISO folders ISO sources subdirectory and rename it boot WIM. Now the next thing we want to do is um, we need to copy the boot image file and um, in this case to copy the boot image file um, and rename it um, just we're you know we're going to make a bootable ISO so that we can boot up off of to actually you know image uh, use ImageX and image a hard drive and use sysprep to prep it and cause it to run the wizard with the OOBE argument and generalize things so, you know, basically we, we need to build this bootable image, a bootable ISO. Alright, so that was sort of the first step as far as creating that folder and with the x86 files and, and making the you know pre-boot environment folder on the C drive. So now the next thing we want to do is going to be uh, copy. And um, again, if you follow what I'm doing exactly, then I guess you'd be typing the same thing. If not, just be aware that your syntax may be different. You may have to fool around with your syntax some, but WIMPE, WIMPE.WIM, remember that WIM is the extension for uh, a Windows image file that you make with ImageX, and then C colon, and we're, you know, that's the source, and then the destination is going to be WinPE, WinPE, and ISO. Um, for the ISO file that we're going to build, remember ISO is just a disk image that you can mount or burn to a CD or DVD. And the uh, sources folder. And boot Windows image file. So basically it'll just copy it to a different location and it'll rename it from WinPE WIM to boot WIM. Okay, and everything's good. One file was copied there. Fourth, copy the ImageX exe file from C Program Files Windows AIK Tools to the folder C WinPE ISO or whatever folder you created to copy the ISOs to. 
And the next thing we need to do is we need to copy the image x utility. Remember the binary executable is image x exe. That's the tool that lets us create and mount and um, you know modify Windows image files. So for that tool, let's use this command again. We're just might as well, we're in the command prompt. Might as well use the copy command plenty of times. And the problem is there's spaces, right, in program files, and, and so you need to you know put two double quotes here and type this argument inside the double quotes otherwise the spaces will throw everything off so c colon backslash program files of course and windows aik and having all these things sandwiched between double quotes will cause the spaces not to give us a headache or errors um, and then of course the x86 32-bit Intel based chipset environment and then the tool um, which is imagex.exe is the name of the tool and that's the source all right and then the destination that's what we're copying from and what we're copying to is c colon uh, winpe and iso our iso folder that we're later going to burn into a bootable image okay and I just want to hit enter Oops, and I cannot find the. Let's see what I, what I flubbed here. Uh, program. F let me see. Program files. Windows AIK. Oops. My bad. I hit the upper Windows AIK uh, tools. Left off the subdirectory there. Tools, and then x86, and then image x yeah and if you're in doubt look let's go browse and we'll check it out check it like it out so if I go here and I go program files there's an easy way to tell and Windows AIK and tools and x86 And lo and behold, there's imagex.exe. And if I come up here and I click in this little address bar, see how it shows me the path? So C colon backslash program files, Windows AIK, tools, x86. There's where imagex is for my 32-bit Intel environment. So that's how I can be sure. And that's, I was missing that here. So if you get this message, I'll leave this in the recording. That way, just in case you, you know, a lot of times up from the command prompt, you have to kind of play with your syntax. But anyway. All right, so one file copied. So we're pretty much set up now for our ISO. We've got all the things we need, and we've got them copied. And uh, you know, basically, the the next thing we want to do is actually create a bootable image with all these wonderful files that we've copied. Five use the command OSCD image for operating system CD image to create the bootable ISO image file from the files you have prepared on your ISO subdirectory using all of the previous commands. Note. OSCD image uses etfsboot.com to create the ISO images boot sector and make it bootable. The syntax is as follows. N enables long file names and B with no spaces indicates the location of the boot sector file. The command structure is OSCD image, the boot sector source, the source, and the target. So to do this, um, there's a tool we can use and that's in the deployment tools OSCD IMG. Uh, OSCDIMG to create our image and the arguments we're going to use are dash n uh, dash b I need to specify um, a special file here in the winpe folder that was added from the x86 folder of you know in the activities that we just did previously and this is etfsboot.com Alright, etfsboot.com and let's specify C um, WinPE ISO and let's specify let's see what do we want to call it? Let's name our file WinPE ISO or ISO ISO. I don't know, what do you say? ISO or ISO? ISO is easier, isn't it? Lazier, easier, whatever. WinPE um, 
Hey, if you ask me, laziness is a virtue. Woohoo! No. Um, yes, no, yes, no. Anyway, um, alright, so OSCD image and then dash n dash b. Let's see, I just check in my syntax. C colon backslash wimp etfs boot dot com. Uh huh. And then there's the directory, C wimp iso. Uh huh. And then the name of the file is going to be C in the wimp folder, wimp dot iso. Uh huh. And again, before I hit enter and run it, let me just open up Windows Explorer. And here we'll go. And here we'll go. And there's etfsboot.com and there's wimpe.wim. I'm just going to minimize this because we'll open it when we're done. And take a look at our ISO file. So I'm going to hit enter. And you can see the percentage. I'll move the mouse. See what down here it's like giving us a percentage of how much complete creating the bootable image file should be about 150 oh a little, a little bit less like 142 meg alright so I'm gonna pull up the directory again and now you can see here's our image file a little bit less than 140 uh, meg there okay so um, you know in this case our options are we can burn it to a CD and boot directly off of it just pop it in a machine and boot directly off of it or if you, like I said, if you have like, you know, daemon tools or power ISO or some kind of an image mounting tool, that's another option for you as well. Or you could just mount it directly in VMware if you want to. But either way, this will give you ImageX, the tool that you need to, uh, you know, image your hard drive with, um, as well as all the other things you need like sysprep and, and, you know, the things that you need to prepare the Windows image to place on a server um, for deployment uh, across the network. Next, take the finished ISO and copy it to a bootable flash drive or burn it to a CD. I'm going to copy mine across the network and burn it to a CD with Nero. Later, I'll set it up with the most excellent and free pen drive Linux tool, sans the CD. When you're done creating your image file, um, again, you either want to burn it to a DVD or a CD, or just copy it across the network somewhere so you can burn it on another machine or maybe mount it with... Uh, yeah. Damien tools or, or power ISO. So what I'm going to do is I just need to connect across the network. And I'm just going to log in here. <coughs> and I have a folder here that I'm going to use for imaging and image files and network installation. So I'm just going to copy it there. And I'll leave that open and I'm just going to open up another instance of my computer, or Windows Explorer, and I want to go into the folder where I made my boot file. And this little ISO here is either what I want to burn or mount. So I'm just going to right click and copy and paste that across the network. And I can burn that to a CD and use it to boot up off of, um, you know, to image my or to create my Windows image file.